Hi there. Uh, here's what we're going to do today. Um, I was going to sh show you a bit of my life. I do more in life than just uh, study Korean or study languages. Um, hockey three times a week is uh, something I very much enjoy and I typically drop by the office in the afternoon. I mean, uh, I'm um, basically semi-retired, uh, but I have an office where we have our wood business and where we have Link and I like to drop by there in the afternoon or come back here and do some work or uh, study or keep up to date with my various and sundry, you know, the forum at Link and Facebook and answering my YouTube uh, people who question, uh, post, post comments and stuff like that. So very quickly, I'm going to show you my morning uh, and then I'm going to come back again and I'm doing that just so you don't always just look at me here. So you see a little bit of my day and then I can come back and I'm going to answer a question uh, that I received from one of my uh, viewers and a, and a link member and that is like how can you get to a stage where you can have a meaningful conversation in six months because she's from uh, Novi Sad in uh, Serbia and there's going to be a, a polyglot conference there in October and she wants to become a true polyglot so more about that later but first I'll show you a bit of my day so today is hockey day so uh, I went to pick up one of our members whose car is in the garage and couldn't make it and he's just gonna come out the door here morning Ross you're gonna be on my uh, YouTube channel <laughs> all right so I'm gonna make you guys famous you're gonna be on my YouTube channel here we are we're the gold team we're playing the blues today you want some skin no we don't want skin depends who's depends who's now Gordy is our goaltender Known go. as six pack. Uh, it turned into an overnight trunk. <laughs> and uh, you're our captain, right, John? A couple of those hitchhikers you picked up. Pardon? A couple of hitchhikers you picked up. I wish there were more of them. They're waiting outside. Right. So why don't you guys learn languages? This, this is all for language. You know, I'm studying Korean right now. Right. Yeah. Good for you. Should I just stop this and get dressed so we can well, play uh, hockey? Korean yeah. girlfriend or what's the deal? Like? That's <laughs> what I'm working towards. That's what I'm working towards. I realize it hasn't helped you at all, Steve, so we combine the language. <laughs> okay. And this is where the rink is. It's in North Vancouver. It's called the Canlan Ice Sports. There's uh, some of our members driving away. And normally I walk into the arena like this, except I've already put my stuff away in the car. And I'll give you a bit of a shot from the inside as well. So as you walk in here, uh, uh, the doors open automatically and there are a total of three rinks. And now they've uh, shut down. We just finished uh, playing our game here and it's uh, about 35. I'm gonna go out for lunch. And there's some little kids here. Uh, but there seems to be no activity. Quite often there is. And uh, what else have we got here? You know, we've even got, uh, there are two defibrillators and I'm one of the people trained to use them. I hope I never have to use one. And uh, there you have it. This is where I play three times a week. Just to continue with a day in the life of a uh, Korean language learner, I uh, finished my hockey and now I am coming here to uh, where I, to, I went on the very first day, uh, which is Sushi Town. And it's right by McDonald's, I think you can see it there. And I'm gonna walk in the door and if I'm lucky, I'll find that same waitress and uh, hopefully she'll think that I have improved. Claire, 안녕하세요, Claire G. 네, 지금 제가 3주일 열심히 공부하고 조금 향상 했어요. 네. 조금. 향상했어요. 오케이. 감사합니다. 아주 맛있습니다. 네, 계산 쇼 주세요. 알겠습니다. 오케이, 감사합니다. So, this is an answer to Nina, Nina Jolic, I think it's pronounced, in Novi Sad. Uh, we have had conversations in French and in English. If I ever learn Serbian, which I hope I will do, then I will speak to her in Serbian at link. Uh, and she uh, said there's a polyglot conference in Novi Sad in October and she wants to become a true polyglot. How does one get to uh, to the to a level where one can have a meaningful conversation in a language in just six months? All right, 
First of all, there are these polyglot conferences. There was one in Hungary. I couldn't go there because I was in Vienna a few weeks earlier and I wasn't just going to hang around. There is apparently one in Berlin. There's talk about one in Montreal. And now there's talk about this one in Novi Sad. As I understand it, largely this is for people who speak four, five, six, seven languages. They get together and, you know, it's, it's like, um, I don't know, a curling bond spiel or a hockey tournament. Uh, people do what they like to do. Uh, they meet up, they talk in the different languages that they share, and it's a great social event. And uh, contacts are made and it stimulates people like, for example, Nina here to improve their languages. So it's extremely positive. It doesn't really seem to be aimed at the person who has one language and has been forever trying to learn another language. And I think that is the vast majority of people who are language learners or could be language learners or would like to be language learners. And I wish there was some way we could get those people to realize that the most important thing about these polyglot conferences is that there are so many people who speak five, six or seven languages and that doing that is not such an extraordinary thing. It's just a matter of interest, applying yourself and sticking with it. So that's just by way of background. Now, uh, and also before I answer Nina's question, a uh, very quick comment about when I went to the uh, Korean or at least the, the, Jap the sushi restaurant run by Koreans, and I had a brief exchange with my uh, friend, the waitress, Claire. She was very busy. I couldn't really, I don't like to just sit there and film people when they're busy serving tables and stuff like that. But uh, on two occasions, she came over just to humor me and she kind of threw some Korean at me. The first time she said something like, you know, do you need anything more? And something about Piri uh, Omnica or something. I wasn't expecting it. I said, uh, you know, repeat that. And then I said, no, no, uh, I don't need anything. And then uh, later she came by and said, uh, it's again, words that I know, but it said, is it cold outside? And I wasn't expecting it. So one thing about being able to respond to conversations and stuff like that is that, that it's not just the language. We also have to have context we have to almost be able to anticipate what people are going to say uh, it takes a lot of practice so in order to be comfortable in conversations you have to have a lot of exposure a lot of exposure not only in the sort of form of input reading and listening and building up your vocabulary but actual practical experience of speaking to people in a variety of situations so that the next time someone says to me uh, is it cold outside? I'll be expecting that kind of question. I'll be expecting those words. I'll be able to respond. So all of that by way of saying, as you know, I believe that in order, in order to have a meaningful conversation, you need lots of vocabulary because you can't expect the other person to dumb down their conversation to whatever limited range of vocabulary you have. You have to have a very large passive vocabulary and then you have your more limited active vocabulary that you can kind of use to kind of work around, uh, you know, twist to what you're trying to say and make the odd mistake and it doesn't matter. But if you don't understand what they're saying, then you can't even get started in a meaningful conversation. And to understand what they're saying, you A, need a large vocabulary and B, you need experience. So my strategy would be if it's six months from now, I would spend the, the better part of three months fundamentally on input and I would get as much of the language in me as possible. If you have the patience to do what Luca does, where you translate from the target language into your own language and then translate back into the target language, I've never done that and I'm not disciplined enough to do it. I'm not writing an exam, uh, you know, but I, I can imagine that it works well. And certainly Luca would, is a perfect example of, of someone who learns languages very well and, and very quickly. So you might want to try that because it works for Luca if you enjoy doing it. Um, so very heavy to input for the first three months at least. Uh, a system like Link, but listening and reading to the same content, some way of reviewing vocabulary. I like to tag phrases and words so that I notice them again when I listen and read. Then after about three months, you're going to have to start speaking and speak to a variety of people. Uh, if you can't uh, you know, go to the country. Like if you're learning Hungarian, you just go next door from Novi Sad. So that's practical or Romania. Uh, on the other hand, 
uh, if you're learning uh, Japanese, you can't just go there for whatever period of time. So you have to try and build up your contacts via Skype. It's not as good. There's no way it's as good. Uh, but the last three months, I would gradually step up my speaking. I would speak maybe three times a week for the month four. And then I would speak every day for month five and even step it up more than that for month six. So during that six month period, the first three months is to become familiar with the language, build up a base vocabulary, have some opportunity of understanding what people are saying. Because you don't want to spend the first three months, like if you spend an hour talking to someone and all you can ask them about is the weather and how old you are, to me that's a waste of time. You're better off to spend that hour listening and reading or reviewing vocabulary. But when you get to a certain level now that you can have a, a more challenging conversation where you actually try to express some thoughts, okay, then you can start stepping up your uh, speaking and put yourself into different situations, have a variety of people that you speak to. Make sure that there's sound, if you're going on Skype, that the sound quality is good, that they're interesting people, that you're not just putting in the time, straining to understand because the crackling of the internet is, makes the sound unintelligible or because the person is not very interesting to talk to. So get good partners or if you're lucky enough, go to the country for two, three weeks. And if you were to do that, like I would love to go to Korea for two, three weeks at the end of my uh, three months challenge here, whether I'll be able to justify flying all the way to Korea just to do that remains to be seen. So there you have it. That's what I would do in order to uh, get to where I can have meaningful conversations within a six month time frame. Thanks for listening.